Hello and welcome to another day of landscape photography. I'm kicking off the new year with a big walk, a big walk in the Lake District, getting up nice and high to the top of a mountain. Now every time I do that, starting at base level with huge mountains behind me like that, I always get lulled into a false sense of security just as the walk up, the hike up is about to start. Photography wise though today, it is a beautiful day. I've got high pressure, not much wind, which is always beautiful in the Lake District. Quite blue skies, so I'm hoping for a bit of cloud later on. But we're gonna stay, I'm out with Paddy again today, staying, we're gonna stay at the top of Great Gable for sunset and hike back down in the dark. So it's gonna be one of those days, I think, where everything happens right at the last minute. So got a good hike up there, getting that fitness going through the new year. So I would really love it if you were to come with me. Let's go. Getting out and about at this time of year is good because the sun stays really low in the sky so you've got good quality of light for photography all day long, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. But in the Lake District, especially when you've got some clear skies, it means that the shadows cast by the mountain into the landscape create a very high contrast scenario. So I'm just not a very big fan of that. They still make nice shots, don't get me wrong, but in terms of top quality, whoops, top quality images, they're just not what I'm looking for. So that's why I think once I get to the top, that sun comes down, get that slightly warmer light, it's all gonna happen at the end. So I'm at the top and it feels good because that was an exceptionally difficult climb. But I have some 360 degree views, a bit dodgy where I'm stood, all the way around. And it is just absolutely incredible up here. I don't think I'm overstating it to say that walking in the mountains does not get any better than this. It's a beautiful winter's day. There's nobody on the top of this mountain except us. It's sunny. It's looking like there's gonna be a good sunset and there is not a breath of wind. It's been hard earned getting up here, but the sense of well-being is just amazing. Just fantastic. I'm almost, I'm lost for words. Uh, so I'm going to have something to eat find some compositions and then just hope that the cloud that we've got at the moment hangs around and we should be getting a really interesting sunset. <laughs> I'm tired, but it, it was worth it. Yes. As is often the way in places like this as I make my way over this very craggy top of the mountain is that when you come to a spot like this which is exceptionally beautiful all around me it's far from straightforward to bring that 360 3D world down into 
a really interesting image. And it's not easy, and it's not obvious either, and it's certainly nothing particularly obvious today, except what is pretty much behind me there, which is looking down towards Wast Water, and towards the sea, and towards the coast, and that's pretty much where the sun is going to be setting as well. There's also some really nice cloud in front of me there as well, so I think that's going to be the spot. I'm just having a little scout around on the top of the hill here, on the top of the mountain, while I'm capturing a time-lapse, and uh, it's so cold. <laughs> looking all around, there's so much contrast. Like, looking just behind me here, so much contrast. And also, the top of this mountain is very, it's like quite a wide expanse, so if you wanted to include any foreground, there'd be a lot of it before you got to the main subject or focal point in the distance, for example, the lake behind me there. But I do really like this rock and the moss, which is covered in ice, and the frozen grass and the frozen moss look beautiful and white and interesting, especially as that golden light is hitting it as well. But it's difficult and I can't really figure out a way in how to bring it down into an image. I'm just gonna sit down because oh, it was hard getting up here. So I think this way is gonna be the way to do it. Waiting for the right moment in a light and just try and make it into something stunning because there's hardly any wind. So Wast Water is looking very still, very beautiful. And I think there's gonna be some really nice color in the sky as well. So that's gonna be what I go for. So I finally have the camera on the tripod for an image and <laughs> very disappointingly, although it's been clear of cloud pretty much all day, a band of cloud looking west on the horizon has now appeared. The sun has just dipped below that now and we've lost the light. I was actually finding it really difficult anyway because just finding the right composition at this altitude with the sun in the location that it was, was just proving really difficult. So what I've done is I've just had a little look around and shot a few things. So the first one is with the 24, sorry, the 70 to 200 lens on, the sun's now dipped behind the clouds, so that's actually made it better for actually capturing an image. So I'm at 70 millimeters at the moment, so as wide as this lens will go, I've just got vast water in the image, and that's with the being framed by the mountains at either side, and then leading up to that sunset basically. The sun has now disappeared behind that cloud so we've lost light but when I did capture it there's some beautiful yellows and oranges in there. I think it's all right. Let's, I'm just gonna have a quick look because I haven't actually reviewed the image. I bracketed the image as well because the dynamic range is massive. Even to my eyes it's a big dynamic range. I'm getting the reflection off the surface of that water as well. There's some really interesting reflections on the sea in the distance as well. It's nice actually, I do like it. It's just, I don't feel at the moment, I may change my mind when we edit it, I just don't feel like it's the grade A image that I was looking for, but it is good. And I'm nicely exposed with that bracketed image. So I think that will make quite an interesting edit actually to make that work. Now, secondly, I'm just, I have an image behind me here and I'm just gonna shoot it again if I can operate the camera and, whoops, operate this camera and my tripod at the same time. There we go. Sorry about that. Right, back over this way, I have the pink in the sky and it just looks incredible. I then have great, the three mountains there. I've got Great End and the two other peaks behind that. And we can see down towards, I think it's Stickle Tarn. Those mountains are now in shadow, but they're a beautiful, a really beautiful yellowy sort of orangey green colour and it's moody compared to that pink sky. You then have the icy tops of those mountains as well and it looks beautiful actually. Let me take a look at that. I've gone for f11 one sixth of a second at ISO 100. Two second time. Let's do it again. Bracketed images, two stops either side. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. There's a lot, because there is still some light coming from over where the sun is. There's some really different tones in the landscape below me that are really interesting. With that pink sky in there as well, that it could work as an image, but I also shot one over there. 
or in a distance into the sea with some windmills. <laughs> so it's all going on. I think if we take these images back into post-processing now, we could make something really good. Just whilst I'm here at 900 metres with the prospect of a walk back down in the dark, I'm just not sure. I want to get them on the big screen, edit them, and I reckon we'll have something pretty decent. So I'm going to pack my bag up now and get back down because I want to get home and get these pictures into Lightroom and see if we can make something of it. But overall, overall, an absolutely, absolutely fantastic day. Hard walk, but a good walk, good amount of exercise, stunning views, no wind at 900 metres in the Lake District. It really doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't, not when you're walking in the Lake District. It could be a bit warmer, but I quite like it when it's cold. Good day, very good day. So let's get back and we'll do some post-processing. So brilliant day up in the mountains and now trekking back down in the dark off Great Gable. Great Gable, great fun. <laughs> right, back in the office now and it's nice to be warm again. It was so cold on the top of that mountain. I was struggling to talk, but I've got three images to show you now. One of which we'll go through the full post-processing of, and then two others that are just, I've got a couple of really interesting things to show you about them. So let's get into the computer and uh, we'll go through it. Right, so we're straight into Lightroom and this is the first image. This is the one that I didn't talk through because I was just struggling so much at the top of that mountain, but I'm really happy with it. And part of the reason I didn't talk through it because I was struggling to actually see the detail through the camera or on the back of the screen at the time. Now I've got it into Lightroom. I'm really, really happy with it. The detail is beautiful, I think. And it just, it hasn't required very much post-processing whatsoever. So you can see here, I've already done it. Um, we've got the highlights, shadows, white and black, just balanced out, a little bit of contrast added, and then a tiny bit of additional exposure. The main change that I've made is to the white balance. So if I just reset that, you can see how bright yellow it has made that. And just by reducing that temperature down, so I'm just gonna undo that, reducing that temperature down just by sort of 600 or so, just brings that image to life. The tint, I've just brought down a tiny bit to 19, so it's really not a lot needed to be done to that image. The, th the reason I wanted to show you this is, and one of the things I forgot to mention at the top of the mountain as well, is just how clear and how far you could see from the top of that mountain, which is quite unusual. You don't usually see that this kind of distance, but if we look at this picture, just zoom in to this area down here. Do you see these hills here? That's actually the Isle of Man. And if you look at a map, that's quite a distance from the top of Great Gable. So it just gives you an idea of how that visibility was. And I love it that it's in that picture because I think it adds an additional layer of interest to that image. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that one. Uh, let's get on with the next. Right, this one was the sort of main image of the day, the main planned image of the day, the sort of area that I wanted to shoot towards Wasp Water. It's okay, it's an okay shot. Like it's, it's, it's still a, a nice shot of the Lake District, getting up high, that nice high perspective, looking down on Wasp Water, which is a big lake, makes it look quite small from this distance but there is a lot of things going for the image. You've got this sort of interest in the sea, you've got the, the sort of wind turbines in the distance there, but the brightness of the lake is a bit distracting. So not 100% not happy. It's not that great image, grade A image that I was looking for, but you can see what I've done here. Hasn't, again, hasn't required too much editing. I have brought a gradient down just to sort of reduce the brightness of that sky, I bracketed it, so I've combined it into a HDR. The reason I wanted to show you this one, and I think you'll find quite interesting, is if we just look down here, see this tiny bit of flare? Now, the sun was behind the cloud, but you can still see it's quite bright up here. So I just want to show you one way that we can kind of reduce the impact of this flare here, because I don't particularly always like cloning things out, because you should try and get stuff like this right in camera. Sometimes you can't, because you can't even see it, 
at the time and I couldn't looking into that bright sunshine. But there's no real way of cloning that out. But one thing you can do is just to take a brush. So come to the brush tool here and then we will just change the colour of it basically. So let's just start by painting in a little bit over there. I haven't got any ch changes to that yet, but let's just paint in the mask. Firstly, we'll reduce the saturation. Then we will also uh, change the white balance. So let's just bring that down. No, that's too blue uh, to there. Let's bring green back in as well. And then let's increase, uh, let's bring the highlights down because that's starting to come in there. And then let's bring the shadows down a touch as well. No, that's too much. Balance it back out to around there. Let's bring the clarity down as well so we don't get that really harshly defined edge. And that's not far off, is it? That looks okay. Let's just try a touch more on there. And now let's take that brush off. I think that looks pretty good compared to that flare that we had before. Uh, so I just think it's a nice little way of just reducing those really quite spread out flare artifacts that you sometimes get in images when you're shooting towards the sun like this. So I just wanted to show you that very quickly. Right, let's go on to the main image that we're going to edit. And this is my favorite image of the day. There's no doubt about it. Um, I really like this image for a number of reasons. But I think as you look at it, the eye is led around this curve here. So you start down here and it leads you around past these crags up to this beautiful colour in this sky. Now this is the raw image, so it didn't look like that to my eyes at the time. And that's what we're going to do as we post-process, just bring it back up to what I saw, to what I felt at the time and make that into the image. I'm also using the loop deck to edit. Uh, I've been using this for quite a while now. A few of you have been asking since I reviewed it, how my long-term experience with it is. I love it. It's such a good way to edit. It feels more natural uh, and you can get to the point pretty much where you're editing without even looking at it once you get to know where all the knobs are and things. So very happy uh, with this loop deck. I'll put a link down below if you want to check them out as well. Um, but let's uh, start the edits of this just very quickly, right? So I think the exposure is not too far off. I want to just warm it up a touch. So that we're just going to turn the knob on the temperature temperature uh, and just go up with that a little bit. I'm quite happy with the tint at the moment. I just want to bring in some contrast to really emphasize the differences in tones between the dark bits of the crags here and the light coming through from the right hand side. So I'm just going to increase the contrast for that. And then highlights and shadows I think look pretty good at the moment. I love the tones, I love the detail in the rock. It just looks great. Uh, let's go up on the whites though because we can see there's quite a big gap there where we're not hitting white and I want to emphasize the feeling of this ice on the top. So I'm just going to up the whites, probably need to go quite a lot on that one. Just concentrating on the foreground at the moment. Let's bring the blacks down a bit as well just so we've got true black in the image and that's fine because I'm going to bring a gradient in now to balance that sky back out. So let's just drag that in. Uh, into here, hold shift down to keep it straight and just put the middle line of the gradient pretty much on the horizon in the background. Now, a beautiful update of Lightroom is the range mask tool when we're using the gradient. So I've, once you've drawn in the gradient, if I was just to bring the exposure down now, it darkens this mountaintop area as well. And I don't want that. Now Lightroom has now got this feature called the range mask and it will it deals with that basically. So just come down to the range mask, range mask, hit luminance and then show the luminance mask. This show this red area here shows the area which is now going to be affected by uh, the gradient. Now if we just hit we're on luminance so if we just drag the range up it will bring that mask away from the mountain tops. So I'm just going to drag, 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 and now you can see this area at the top of the mountain hasn't gone red, or it is less red. There's going to be less effect of that mask on the top of the image and on the tops of the mountains. Untick show luminance mask, and now we can reduce the exposure. So I'm just going to come down uh, to probably about two stops to about there. That looks good. 
can now start to see some of that detail in the sky coming out, starting to look really good. Uh, I want to just reduce the highlights a bit as well to further that. I'm also going to up the saturation a touch just to 11. This is still all on the gradient that I've dragged down. And I'll also just add a touch of dehaze as well. And I don't particularly like this little top band here that's th that has that kind of bluish, dirty tinge to it. So all to get rid of that, all I'm gonna do is just up the tint, make it a little bit more magenta. And I'm gonna go up to, just keep going till it looks about right. We're getting pretty close now. Let's just come down and turn on the profile adjustments for the lens that I've got. So let's just add a little bit of clarity in to really bring even more of that detail out in those rocks because I think it just looks great. So I'm just gonna go up. The clarity also adds contrast. So I'm just gonna keep going until it looks about right. I'll also add a touch of vibrance, not too much, and then a little bit of saturation as well, just to about there. That enhances the clouds, enhances the sky. And then I'm just gonna go a tiny bit up on the exposure just to balance a few things out. And then I'm gonna go up a bit further on the whites as well. I think that's now looking pretty good. Let me just go on there, add a little bit more warmth into it just to get the nice whites in there. That's looking great. I love this image. The detail is beautiful. The composition I'm happy with. And also because it, again, because it was so clear when we look into the distance here, this peak here, if we zoom in a touch, that is Ingleborough Mountain in the Yorkshire Dales, which is about an hour's drive from the Lake District. And that just really gives you another sense of how clear this day was. So overall, I've got two images that I'm really happy with there. A third one that is okay, good enough to share on social media, but just, I thought it was an interesting edit. So I just wanted to take you through it. Right, stick around for the information on the end screen, but I do have one place left on my tour in the Lake District. If you liked what you saw there, we won't be going quite as high as that, but it's a three day epic trip around the Lake District doing landscape photography. There's one place left. I'll put a link down below for you to check it out, but I would love to see one of you there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do, and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.